Uh, good morning, and can I welcome everyone to the 50th meeting of the Local Government and Communities Committee in 2018. Can I remind everyone present to turn off mobile phones, and as meeting papers are provided in a digital format, tablets may be used by members during the meeting. We've got a full house this morning. No apology has been received from uh, members of the committee, and we move to agenda item one, which is the Housing Amendment Scotland Bill, uh, and the committee will still consider this bill at stage two. I welcome the Minister for Local Government and Housing, Kevin Stewart, MSP, and his company officials to today's meeting. Good morning, Minister. Hi. Good morning. Um, our task today is to consider the one amendment which has been formally lodged by the Minister. In addition, we are required to formally agree to each provision of the Bill at the appropriate point. Only members of the committee are permitted to vote in these proceedings, and members should have with them the Bill and the marshalled list. As there is only one amendment, there are no groupings. The procedure will be that I will call the Minister to move Amendment 1 and to speak to it. I will then invite other members of the committee to contribute if they wish, before asking the Minister to wind up if required and indicate whether they are pressing or withdrawing the amendment. If the amendment is not withdrawn, I will put the question on the amendment. If we are not agreed, I will call a division, which will be concluded by a show of hands. If the result is such a division is a tie, I as convener will then exercise the casting vote. So that's the that's the rules, that's the housekeeping arrangements, and we'll, we'll get started now. Uh, so the question is that section one, sections one through to nine be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Okay. Uh, can I call amendment one in the name of the minister? I can ask the minister to move and speak to amendment one. Uh, convener, thank you. Uh, I wish to speak to the only amendment for this bill, amendment one. Uh, the amendment introduces a sunset clause that that is a time limit of three years on ministers' powers to make regulations under sections eight and nine of the bill. It means that these powers will expire three years after the bill has received royal assent. Uh, I confirmed at stage in the stage one debate that we would introduce the sunset clause to address the concerns that this committee. Uh, the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and stakeholders, in particular UK Finance, raised about the open-ended nature of the powers that Sections 8 and 9 will, as the Bill currently stands, confer on Ministers. Uh, by way of background, uh, Section 8 of the Bill uh, gives Ministers the power to make further modifications to the functions of the Scottish Housing Regulator beyond those that the Bill makes. Uh, ministers would only exercise the power in Section 8 if, when the Bill is enacted, the Office for National Statistics were to conclude formally uh, that the changes to the regulator's functions in the Bill as passed are not enough to enable it to reclassify RSLs back to the private sector. In that event, uh, the power would enable ministers to respond quickly uh, to the ONS's finding uh, and make whatever further adjustments would be required to secure that reclassification. Uh, ministers would only use the power in the circumstances I have described and in light of discussions that we have had with ONS officials about the bill's provision, uh, it appears unlikely uh, that we will, need, we will need to use this power. It remains, however, a sensible precaution to have the ability to act if we need to. Uh, in the event that was necessary, uh, the regulation-making power is subject to the affirmative procedure, and so the Parliament would be able to scrutinise any provision being made. Section 9 is different in that we know we will need to use the power it conf confers before ONS can review the classification of RSLs. The power enables ministers to make regulations limiting or removing the influence of, that local authorities may exert over RSLs through the, any ability that they may have to appoint officers to the RSL or to exercise certain voting rights. Uh, as I said in my stage one evidence convener, uh, we will use the power to make regulations that will specify that local authorities may only nominate up to 24% of the board members of an RSL and that they may not exercise control over RSLs, for example, through powers of veto over an RSL. Subject to the Parliament passing the bill at stage three, uh, we expect to lay these regulations in September. 
In the case of both sections, uh, there is no need for a continuing power to make regulations. Uh, therefore, the Government is happy to introduce the sunset clause to reassure the committee and stakeholders uh, that the power will not be open-ended. Um, I trust that that will be acceptable to the committee uh, and I move Amendment 1 and urge members to support it, convener. Okay, thank you very much, Minister. Any members wish to contribute to this part of proceedings? Uh, Mr Simpson. Um, just uh, very uh, quickly, convener, just to welcome uh, the amendment, um, welcome the fact the uh, Scottish Government has taken on board uh, comments from the Delegated Powers Committee and indeed this committee uh, and other stakeholders and I fully support the amendment. Okay, thank you Mr Simpson. Any other um, contributions from members? Okay, there being no other contributions from members, can I ask the Minister to, to wind up his contributions in relation to the amendments? I think I've said all I need to. Thank you, Convener. Okay, thank you very much, Minister. The question, therefore, is that Amendment 1 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Please. We are. The, question, the next question is that Sections 10 and 11 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Please. Okay. Uh, and the final question is that the long title be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Okay, thank you. And that ends stage two consideration of the bill. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you. So we now move to agenda item two, which is subordinate legislation, and the committee will consider negative instruments 110 and 115 as listed on the agenda. These instruments are laid under the negative procedures, which means that the provisions will come into force unless the Parliament votes on a motion to annul them. No motion to annul have been laid and I invite members to make any comments on the instruments before us. Okay, there being uh, no comments uh, from members, um, I would invite the committee to agree that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments. Are we agreed? Okay, that is agreed. And we now move to agenda item three, which is the Planning Scotland Bill, which has previously been agreed to take in private. We now move into private session. Thank you.